Uh, hi everyone, Physics Ninja here. Uh, today I want to do a problem that comes up quite often when I do tutoring, uh, the circle proof. So I'm going to do five circle proofs in five minutes. Uh, let's see what we can do. Again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. All right, let's do this. Okay, so to prove the first one, the first one called angle in a semicircle. It says if I split a circle in half and then I make a triangle, so for example, the blue line here forms a triangle by using the center line, or the green one here forms a triangle by using the green line here and the center line, uh, that the angle A and B both have to be equal to 90 degrees and they're both equal to each other. Okay, so in order to show this, let's just consider this uh, blue triangle over here with the red base. So in order to show this, um, all you have to do is you first split this triangle in half. And you go to the center of the circle, and we're going to draw another segment. The segment's going to go from the vertex here all the way to the center. Now you see these three red lines the way I have them drawn here. These are simply the radius of that circle. So they're all the same length. Right, so let's just call that R, R and R. Okay, so they all have to be the same length. Now the last thing we have to do in order to prove this, we just have to define some of these other angles here. So I'm gonna call this angle over here, let's call that angle X. Now again, this here forms an isosceles triangle, which means that this here also must be the angle X. We can call this angle over here the angle Y. All right, now if I look at the other triangle that it formed, the other triangle also forms a, an isosceles triangle. Look at this one, let's call this angle here Z. If you call that Z, that means that this angle here must also be equal to the angle Z. And the last one, just for completeness, let's call this interior angle here W. Now let's use the fact that we know that the sum of the three angles inside any triangle must be equal to 180 degrees. So we have to have, if I first look at this first isosceles triangle, that has to give me that 2x plus y must be equal to 180 degrees. Call this equation one. Let's look at our second isosceles triangle. The second one says that 2z plus w must be equal to 180 degrees. Now what else can I use? Well, the other thing I can use now is I can also use the sum of both of these angles. Remember here, this line, this original red line, right, splits the circle in half. And you have to have here that the angle Y plus the angle W, that must be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so we've got a couple relationships now. Well, we can simplify some of these. Let's call this equation three. So let's first look at the first two equations here. What happens if you add the first two equations? So let's do equation one plus equation two, what would that give me? So you get 2x plus 2z, just group all the terms with the two. Uh, the other terms I'm gonna get here are y plus w, and that there must be equal to 360 degrees. However, look at this second term here, or the third and the fourth term rather. Both of these terms here, I know this must be equal from equation three. I see that this here has to be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so this here has to be equal to 180 degrees. So we can simplify this expression a little bit. Let's go on this side. So we get 2x plus 2z plus 180 equals to 360. You could take away 180 on each side. What do you get? I'll factor out the two and you get 180, so you get at the end, x plus z must be equal to 90 degrees. Well, have a look at this expression. What is the angle x plus z? All right, the angle x plus z is this angle over here. That's the angle over here, and that actually is what we define as the angle A. So the angle A must be equal to 90 degrees. So there's the proof for this one. All right, let's go to the next statement. All right, here's our second one. It says that the angles at the center, so again, if you form, start from the center, draw lines that go to the circumference, and then you connect them with another line that goes to the circumference over here, that the angle that this side makes and the angle that it makes at the center are related to each other, and basically the angle A here is equal to twice the angle B. So in order to prove this, uh, what you end up doing again is you end up, again, making another segment here. So I'm going to produce this segment. And again, 
all of these red segments are all the same length. And they form two isosceles triangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some new variables just to define those triangles. Call this W. That means that this angle down here has to be W. I'm going to call this angle here X. And now this angle over here, let's call this Z. And I'm going to call the angles in this other isosceles triangle over here, we're going to call that the angle Y. So Y is this angle. Uh, w is, was this previous angle over here. So that means that this last one here must also be Y. Okay, now again, we use the fact that if you sum the angles in a triangle, they have to be equal to 180 degrees. So let's first look at our isosceles triangle. There's three angles here. We have 2W plus the angle X. If you sum all of those, they must be equal to 180 degrees. Call that equation one. Let's do the same thing for the other isosceles triangle. You get 2Y plus the angle Z must be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so we have two expressions so far. Let's do one more. Let's look at this interior of a circle here. All right, we've got three angles. We have Z, X, and A. And if you sum those three angles, they must be equal to uh, 360 degrees. All right, let's call that equation three. Now all we have to do is manipulate these equations a little bit. Uh, from equation one, what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna isolate X. If I isolate X from equation one, let's just call it one prime, you get X, which equals to 180 minus two W. From equation two, call it two prime, we're gonna isolate Z, and I'm gonna do that because I wanna substitute X and Z into the third equation. So here you get 180 minus two, uh, two Y. All right, equation three now, if we substitute our values for X and Z, what we end up getting is 180 minus two W. That was X plus 180 minus 2Y plus the angle A must be equal to 360 degrees. All right, now we can simplify some terms. We have 360 here and we have 180 two times over here. We can cancel those out. Now let's simplify this a little bit. <clears throat> what we get here is A. Let's bring all the other terms on the other side. So we have minus 2W and we have minus 2y, so that becomes 2w plus 2y on this side. All right, and at the end, just factor out the two, and what do you get? Uh, a, the angle A is equal to two times uh, w plus y. Now let's go back and relate that. What is this angle w plus y? It's the angle up here, All right? The angle up here is the angle w plus y. All right, so we know that there is equal to the angle B. So last step, uh, we've shown that uh, A equals to 2B. All right, so that's it for this one. Pretty straightforward. All right, proof three is called uh, angles in the same segment. So we've got a segment here drawn in red. And now again, I form a triangle here by forming two lines that join to this segment. And the proof says, regardless of how you draw this triangle here, if the base or the segment here is the same, that I have to show that these angles here have to be the same. So in order to prove this, all you do now is we're gonna use what we just did in the previous proof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the center of the circle and I'm gonna form another triangle. And I'm gonna call this angle over here, this interior angle, that new triangle that I just did, I call that the angle C. Now what we just previously shown, if I just consider the blue one here, we have a relation between the angle C and the angle A, and that's what we just did. And we previously shown that C must be equal to two times A. Well, it also means that the angle C, it, I could have done the same proof now and shown that the angle C equals to two times the angle B. So the only way I can have this relationship here is if two A uh, equals to 2B, uh, therefore uh, the angle A must be equal to the angle B. Okay, so this is basically just using the previous proof that I used to a slightly different uh, variation here. Proof four is the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral. Prove that both of these angles, these opposite angles, I could have shown these other two here, but if you pick these two angles here, that the angle A plus B has to be equal to 180. Now in order to show this again, we're gonna start at the center of the circle 
and we're going to draw lines that connect the two other vertices here of this quadrilateral. Okay, now we're going to use our double angle proof that what we just showed previously. Again, if this is the angle B, you should be able to show that this over here, again, using what we've already done, this here has to be the angle 2B. Again, using our previous proof, if this here is the angle A, then that must mean that this previous angle, or this larger angle on this side, again, must be equal to the angle 2A. So now we're just about done. You consider this interior uh, circle over here. You have to have that 2B plus the angle 2A must be equal to 360 degrees. And the only way that's capable is if A plus B is equal to 180 degrees. All right, last proof here is the alternate angles theorem. It basically says that uh, this angle, if you draw a triangle inside a circle, says that this angle here has to be equal. Now, if I go to the vertex here of this triangle, which is at the edge of the circle, and I draw a tangent line, it basically says that this angle A must be the same angle as this angle A over here. Uh, the alternate angles theorem can also be shown to show that this angle B also, again, by the same theorem, has to be equal to this angle B over here. Okay, in order to show this, what you have to do now is use some of the previous theorems that we've kind of developed. So we're going to draw a center line. We're going to start at the bottom vertex here and draw a line that goes through the center. Okay. I'm also going to connect this vertex to this one. All right, now we can define some angles in here. Uh, what I can define here is an angle C. Okay. And just for now, we're just going to call these different angles. I'll call this one A1, and I'll call this angle here A2. So the angle C is this one over here. I'll maybe make that in green. All right, so uh, first thing we have to show, again, we have a segment down over here. Look at this black segment here. This segment of that original triangle here is shared with this angle over here this first triangle. So that means that using that previous proof that this here must also be the angle A1 because they share the same segment. Okay, and we've already shown that any triangle that you draw that has the same base over here will make the same angle. So that's kind of a useful expression. And now we're going to use some of our uh, rules for triangles. Again, if I look at this green triangle here, I have an angle A1. Here I have an angle that is 90 degrees. This angle here has to be 90 degrees because this was the first proof I did. And if I have a line that splits a circle, right, we show that the angle here must be 90 degrees. So from both of these steps, you have to have that the angle A1 plus the angle C, again, these are the two other angles of the triangle, those must be equal to 90 degrees uh, because this other angle here is 90. All right, the other angle there that also must be 90 degrees, you can also show that, if, again, if this line here is a tangent line down here at the bottom, you have to have that the angle C plus the angle A2 must also be equal to 90 degrees. All right, now we're just about done. All you have to do now is just <laughs> show this. The only way you can have this, uh, both of these expressions equal to 90 degrees you can subtract both of these equations, and what are you going to get? The C's are going to cancel out. So if I call this equation 1 and equation 2, and I do 1 minus 2, you're going to be left with A1 minus A2 has to be equal to 0. So A1 must be equal to the angle A2. And that's what we were really trying to show here originally. All right, we were originally trying to show that this angle has to be equal to this uh, alternate angle. Now you can do a similar proof now to show that this angle B is indeed equal to the other angle B. It's the exact same proof just done on the other side.